Hi there, welcome back. My name is Candace and I upload videos to YouTube sometimes and I am currently in my reading era and so I'm just going to jump into it. We're reviewing Lauren Groff's The Vaster Wilds which came out in um, mid-September of this year. So like two weeks ago. Don't know why I needed to preamble it that way. Anyway, I was not expecting to read this. I had some other books on hold at the library and I had been seeing this, uh, that it was coming out and I was definitely interested, but did not think that I would get the opportunity to pick it up from the library. I had never read from Lauren Groff before, so I wasn't quite sure whether or not I wanted to spend the money and I had just kind of been burned by a couple of books that I bought too hastily. So I was like, ugh, I don't want to buy this one. But then I went to the library and there it was on the new release like shelf. And I just immediately grabbed it because um, there were a ton of holds out for it. So I don't know how I got it, but I got it and I read it pretty quickly because I want other people to be able to get this book too. I know that there's a lot of holds on it and I I didn't want to like be stingy with it. But now that I've read it, if you listen to nothing else in this review, um, overall I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 and I think that that's my fault because I read it too fast because this is not meant to be read quickly in my opinion. Um, I wish that I would have had time to sit with it, to annotate it, um, to actually like look into some of the things that she was talking about in the book, especially some of the references to nature and the geography of the area and the tribes as well of the native people that they were interacting with. I wanted so much to be able to sit slowly with this book and because I picked it up from the library and I didn't want to hold on to it for longer than I really needed to, um, and I had other books I wanted to kind of go through, I didn't get to enjoy this as much as I think I would have if I would have just bought it and read it slowly, like one or two chapters at a time, um, instead of like trying, sorry, my nose itches from the makeup, um, trying to push through. So that's my bad. And I honestly, I hope that I do pick this up someday in the future and read it and take the time to really digest it and, and mold into the setting and the, the storyline. Um, but I didn't do that this time, so it only gets a 3.5. But honestly, if I would have done that in the future, um, I could see it being a 4.5, even a 5. Like, I totally understand why this book has such a high rating on Goodreads. I totally get it. It just wasn't right for me right now. Um, so it doesn't follow, In uh, again, in my opinion, this book doesn't follow, like, the traditional plot structure. So... I, I don't want to give any spoilers away, especially since it is such a new release. So I'm going to be quite more vague than I usually am. And I'm going to focus more on sort of the structure of the book and the personality of our main character instead of some of those plot points. Because really, I feel like the purpose of the plot in this is to reveal. So I don't want to share anything really too much. Um, no real specific details because every chapter we learn something new and everything that we learn is just so, um, I don't even know the right word for it right now, but every moment that we learn something new about our main character and about the landscape that she herself is um, adventuring on. It's just a really special moment and I don't want to take that away from you. So basically this book is written, it, I have my notes down here, that's why I keep looking down. So The Vaster Wilds is written in this very lyrical prose that definitely juxtaposes and kind of like almost feels a little bit awkward um, in a good way 
against the danger and the violence and the absolute gruesomeness that it is for this marrying character to endure um, in order to survive in the wildlands that she is. Um, so it, it's, I mean, like, she's not holding back on some of those bodily functions, let's just say, that our main character is enduring and the illnesses that she witnesses, not just, is my cat up here? No. Um, not just that, you know, she endures during her own, um, adventures through the through the wilds but also uh as she is watching smallpox and other uh illnesses in England and in the colony so this is set in early colonial America so really really um I think she might be one of the first couple of rounds of settlers to have landed um, on the East Coast. And it's in the winter, everyone is starving, everyone is sick, a bunch of people are dying as per the usual. And they have already just like ruined any relationship that they have with the native peoples. So our main character goes throughout this, goes throughout this adventure scared of more scared of the native peoples than she is of her own people which you can make up your uh or you can come to your own opinions about that but it's really interesting how the author applies nuance to it and allows us to look at this um situation from both the main character's perspective of what she's been told what she has seen um and what she's kind of like been brainwashed to believe about the native people. And then with little glimpses of reality from their point of view. Now there wasn't a lot. This isn't, this is not a thick book. So we're getting, we're getting enough nuance, I think, to where it's not harmful. Um, but I am not the one to define the harm for this book. Um, cause that's just not my life that I have lived, but um, I think that the author has been very careful um, and very thoughtful in the way that she has portrayed how cruel the colonizers were, um, but then how strong and uh, really understanding the Native people were and applies a lot of empathy to them too. We don't get a lot of POV from their perspective. It's really mostly um, our main character, but I feel like we get enough to where we just get that that like ounce of nuance to where it's like this is how you talk about topics like this. In my opinion, I think she did a really good job um, highlighting, you know, both sides of this. Uh, definitely could have been could have given more perspective from the native peoples, but that's not what this book was about, honestly. Um, and it's not really her story to tell either. So the main character, um, I'm, I don't want to reveal a lot about her because the whole story is just learning who she is. But it opens up, she's running away from her colony for some reason. We don't know exactly why. Um, it's alluded to that she has done something but basically she's running away and she's trying to find another group of colonizers. Um, she's trying to find another colony. She is English, so she's hoping to find some a French colony um, in order to move into. And basically, we don't we don't know why she's run away until this is like one thing that I will say until literally the very end. So as far as plot structure goes, what I will say, this is not my favorite. Um, this is actually like a plot structure that I don't like so much, but now that I know what it is, again, going back and rereading it, with that in mind, I would read it from for different goals. Um, but it was just like the most exciting thing happened at the very end, like within the last 30 pages. And I was like, I wish this was the climax. Like I wish we were building up to this moment 
and then it had some more action and then allowed it to kind of taper off. But that's not what we had. It was like, that was the most exciting, I mean, exciting is kind of a bad way to put it, but that was like the most shocking, exciting thing. And I think that it was meant to be a twist or um, like a big reveal, but I wanted that to be the climax. Like I just, I, I just felt like I wanted to know more sooner. So it, it again, that's like a personal, preference type of thing. I don't think that it's a slide on the on the author at all. Uh, totally valid, but it just wasn't for me in this time. Also, I, have a, I, I need to stop doing this. I have such a bad time with not reading a synopsis or I'll read like a two sentence like a uh, tag for a book, maybe a couple of little blurbs and then that's all that I feel like I need. And then I go into it and I'm like, well, this isn't what I thought. And it's like, well, no one said that was what the book was about. I just like filled in gaps. So I need to start reading synopses. Uh, this is a dark book. This is not a light read. I would definitely suggest if you're in a moody mood, it the tail end of winter, <laughs> that you want something dark, this is what you read. Um, because I was hoping for something lighter. And there are moments where, where you're hopeful and you're like, yeah, but um, no, it's not a light read whatsoever. Um, the descriptions, so going back to the prose, the descriptions of nature, the descriptions of her just basically our main character surviving, um, her trip, across, we do learn about how she got to America, so that whole backstory, beautifully written. Again, very lyrical prose. However, one of the other things that I didn't terribly love is that there were a lot of times where the syntax, the structure of the sentence was so like out there written, like really trying. It seemed like it was almost trying too hard um, to the point where I had to go back and reread the sentence multiple times and not just because like my eyes were starting to move faster than my brain, but like genuinely I didn't know what it was trying to tell me. So again, that might be a preferential thing. It might be because I was moving too fast, but, uh, just some of it was a, a little bit uh, like a scotch pretentious and I'm like, you could have said that in so many less and so many more direct words, but I get it. Some people like that and it is literary fiction and I haven't read literary fiction in a while, so I am out of practice. Um, let's see. Oh, so I do back to a positive. I'm not going to tell you about the main character in the sense of like who she is and her background because I want you to discover that on your own, but her personality. Oh my god, this is such a likable character. I, I don't know what that breathing pattern was. Um, it is hard to breathe. But anyway, so she is loyal and loving and so strong, so independent. She's very logical. So even though she is like thrusted into this hyper religious community, with a lot of horrible opinions, she's able to like deconstruct those and even reflect back on her own judgments and be like, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Maybe I should have actually allowed them to help me. And she just, again, I think that this goes along with that nuance that I was talking about earlier that the author was providing. Like she does have those initial biases, but she's able to take kind of like the the blinders off and see the bigger picture. And so it's just so redeeming because it's realistic that she would have those biases, but it's redeeming that she's able to see the humanity um, and the, the actuality of what's going on around her. I love this main character. I would, I would love to learn more about this main character. And honestly, it is 
that that makes me want to pick up more books by this author because I did again I didn't terribly love the all of the writing um it did kind of throw me off a little bit and I didn't terribly love the plot structure but the character was just so good and honestly the descriptions in there were really well done as well I mentioned in my last review Mother Daughter Murder Night um where I love any time that the setting the earth nature becomes almost a character within the novel without anthropomorphizing making it like too human um just letting it be what it is and i i did appreciate that as well i thought that she did a good job what else i talked about that and that and that okay well i think that is everything yeah, it, it, it was an interesting take on um, a survival story, a nature story, historical fiction. Oh my gosh, I didn't even mention this. So this is a highly feminist book. Um, and it, it was making me think too, like the whole time, like, can't we just get a feminist novel of literary fiction that isn't depressing? I get why we have it and why it's depressing, but can't we just have one? <laughs> so if you have an idea of a feminist novel that really really hits hard on those themes um then uh yeah please share that with it but without like making me sad um please share that because i would love to to check it out but um yeah it, the way that it um spoke about feminism felt very mm, it like transcended time so obviously things were like way worse for women back in the 14, 1500s, um, mostly everywhere. But it, it, I mean, I felt like I could still relate to it. And it was just, I, I think that the feminist themes weaved in there weren't too like heavy handed. And the more that I think about this, I really should take my 3.5 on Goodreads and instead of bumping it down to a three, bump it up to a four. Usually by the time I'm done like thinking through my review, um, I end up changing. But anyway, so coming up next, what I started reading, I'm oh, I'm not going to give content or trigger warnings for this book. Honestly, look it up. There's, <laughs> there's a lot. So, um, and I, I don't want to tell you any trigger or content warnings because I just feel like it's going to ruin something. Just expect this is going to hit you hard no matter what. Um, so if you're not in a place to read about that, maybe don't pick it up. But if you want to know uh, the content and trigger warnings, I suggest looking that up somewhere else. Anyway, so what I'm reading right now, a couple of other books that I got from the library. Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson, because yes, I am late. Um, but I also, I saw that the other book came out and they're so cool looking, <laughs> they're just, they're gorgeous. And I got to page 100 last night, so I'm almost a quarter of the way through this. And especially after reading this, this is like the kind of softer, lighter, I mean, it's still high stakes. Um, there's still like death and sadness and grieving and everything in it, but, um, it's just, it's a lot, it's a lot cozier in my opinion. <laughs> I'm sure most people would agree is cozier than this, but yeah, this is, this is what I'm reading right now. And then after that, uh, Kindred by Octavia Butler. Um, so I have been wanting to read this for a while and I put it on hold at my library and I was able to get it actually pretty quickly. So I think this weekend I'm going to zoom through this and then start on this and I'm about to take this back to the library and pick up some more books that I have on hold. I have too many books on hold, but hopefully I can get through them and I will also see if there's anything else new that's out um, that I just happen upon while I'm there, but I'm about to go do that right now. And then I have to go meet up with a friend and I have lots of fun things planned for the day. And I also need a snack, but 
please let me know what you're reading. Have you read this? Have you read Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff? Like how does that compare to this? Because I'm thinking that might be the next book that I pick up and I don't know if it's like this or if it's completely different. So I'll actually read a synopsis of that one to try and get like a good handle on it and maybe try to find a no spoiler review because I do want to read more by her but I don't know if I should go ahead and like I said buy or rent from the library anyway let me know what you're reading let me know what you thought about this um if there's anything new coming out there's so many good books coming out right now that I am so uh, I'm having such a hard time not purchasing, um, but we are expecting baby and I am trying to spend all money on baby, but it's hard because there's so many good books. But anyway, I hope that you have a great rest of your day, night, week, weekend, whatever it is, and uh, happy reading. Bye.